Hey, scrapbook friends, it's Nicole and I am back. I think this is layout nine in our Christmas in July series using the Creative Memories Joy to the World collection. Um, I did have several of you tell me that you would like for me to feature some layouts using the mats, the variety mat pack. And so this layout does in fact use those mats. I'm gonna show you a couple of different configurations that you can do it. This is a great way to use mats, of course, as mats. Um, we're going to do some other things with them too um, in a future video, I hope. But um, but for today, we're just going to use them as mats. And I think sometimes we forget that they are an option. So this is going to be hopefully a super speedy layout. Um, and I have done a sample and I actually have pictures to put on it. These are pictures of me, uh, the Christmas that I had just turned three years old. So I was very cute and I'm having a good time, a good time um, scrapbooking some of these pictures of cute little me back in the 70s. Look at those pants. Yep, so cute. Okay, so for this one, you're just we're just going to use two papers. We're going to use the uh, mini icons and the green chevrons, which is the back side of the leaves. And we're also going to be doing some welding. So you're going to need a strip of uh, white or scrap. It can be any color you want. I love to use the, the inserts that come in paper packs when I'm doing welding. So I'm going to use that. And then we're going to use some of the mats and um, a couple of the laser embellishments and some regular embellishments. So hopefully use several of the pieces of your collection that you have been um, accumulating. And of course, if you don't have the mats and you want to do this, you could just cut mats out of cardstock. Complimentary cardstock would be, would be fine. So the mats, uh, I've showed you the mats in my um, product preview video. So hopefully you remember that you get 12 mats that are four by six and 12 mats that are four and a half by six and a half. And, oh, sorry, I didn't get them out. I thought I cut them enough that I could just pop them out. All right, and these mats, one of the things I love about them is that you get one that's like a journal mat and then the back is a solid. And so for this layout, I'm going to use all the ones that have these stripes on them. I think I used that one actually. So these are all the big ones that have the stripes. So we're going to use the red stripe, the red stripe, the not the green stripe. That was too green. We didn't. I didn't use the green stripe. We're going to use the gold stripe. And what I didn't like about this one is that the gold stripe had the blue stripe on the back. So we only had to choose one of those. So I think those are the layouts we're going to use. And then, or sorry, the mats we're going to use. And then when I originally started, I was gonna use a journal box, but then my layout kind of changed how, how I'm gonna do that. But I'm gonna pull this out in case we decide we wanna do this. I'm gonna use this one in a future layout. And this one too, I love this one. Um, but I want the one that says, Merry Christmas to you. And this does say it in both directions. So you can decide if you want it horizontally or vertically. So those are the mats we want. I'm gonna set those aside actually for now. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create our base page and we're gonna do that by welding. So if you hate, hate, hate welding, I won't make you do it, but it's such a great way to conserve your paper. Um, and hopefully once you've seen my system, which I learned from my uh, Creative Memories team member, Sherry Tilly, who also has a fun Scrapping with Sherry YouTube channel. You should check her out. Um, but uh, we're going to use this welding technique that, you know, I, you, you hesitate to say something has changed your life, but like it's changed my scrapbooking life. So I can't ever decide if this has a right way and a wrong way. The stocking is kind of go that way. So I kind of feel like if I do it this way, the stockings are hanging, the bells are pointing down, the gingerbread boy is that way. So I think this is up and down, but I don't know that it matters. I have no idea. But the first page I want to cut at seven. Oh no, I don't want to cut it at seven. I'll tell you why. I want to cut it at five. I want to cut it at five. So I have a five and a seven because this is now, this is the factory edge. This is the one that's perfectly straight. I know in case my cutter blade is a little bit dull. So I'm going to swap these so that I got the factory edge on the inside. And now I'm going to want to do the same thing again because I want this five to butt up against here. But I want my chevrons to be pointing up and down. I'm going to also cut this one at five. 
Of course, this wouldn't work if you were trying to match patterns. You know, you might just need to trust your cutting to be able to do that. But this is the, the layout that we're going to do with the green in the middle and the little uh, confetti icons on the outside edge. Now I'm gonna take this cover sheet, which Creative Memories has assured us is photo safe. Um, this is Joy to the World, so it's back when it was more of a cardstock weight. Now it's a paper weight, but it's still safe. And we're gonna get two one half inch strips. And you could use any paper for this. If you have a paper that you just don't like, if you have a, a paper that, um, you know, left her from another project, you don't have to use the, the paper, the insert sheet, any piece of paper that's 12 by 12. Okay, and what we want to do now is to weld these two pieces together. Now, when I was first shown about how to weld, they put the tape on their little strip of paper, stuck this together, and then tried to position this you know, so that it fit just right. And I had trouble, I would get it down crooked or I'd knock my papers and they wouldn't line up exactly right. I couldn't see for sure that they were butted up against each other. So Sherry's way that she taught me, I'm gonna line it up and we're gonna use our regular tape runner. Reposition would not work as well for this. And just go along the seam right here. I have to make sure I go right to the edge. Just go along the seam and you'll see, I mean, you can't really see from there, but you see it just, you know, tapes the two together. So I could just kind of leave it like this, but of course I need to cover it up so this isn't sticky. And then I can take my strip of paper and lay it over the, over the adhesive. And as long as you do your adhesive straight, it's going to fit on there. So here we're going to do the same thing here. I always like to just flip these um, long ways, the, the, up and down way, vertically, anyway, so that I make sure that they're in the same direction. This would not be the end of the world because like I said, that one is not, um, is not very directional. Oh, that one I went off the edge. About every, every inch and a half or so, that little piece went off the edge, so I just folded it back over and then we'll put our paper down and seal that up and that gives us our background sheet and that's the hardest part of this layout frankly is putting is doing the welding oh this way there we go so that's going to be our layout these two pieces together and then one of the things I do love to do with the mats is to take a four by six mat and mount it on a four and a half by six and a half mat. I think I'm actually gonna use this one with the um, with the journal box. It's got a little grid in it. If you wanted to use this for journaling, you could, but I'm gonna use it for this. And it, they left the, the journal box small enough that you can cover it all of this and it's gonna look like it's these two are the same. Okay, so we're just gonna do that. If you wanted to maybe wait and decide what your layout is, I guess we could do it this way. Let's do that. Let's play around with our layout design a little bit. Um, I did notice that these mats, that they have kind of a, I don't want to say it's a, a jagged edge. It's not, it just like, it's not, it's not as clean of an edge. So if you wanted to, you could take your trimmer. I love my personal trimmer for cutting just a little smidge off the edge. I'm just going to cut like a hair. When I say a hair, I mean like, like a hair, just that little white part. And then it doesn't have that white edge. I don't know what just maybe, maybe there, maybe they needed to change their trimmer blade at home office. All right. So that's going to go there. And then it will depend on how your photos are. Um, my original design that I was going to do with this was I was going to do a yellow and a blue and a blue and a red, and then maybe put, um, Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. Maybe put a journal box on this side. I think we've got a vertical journal. Here we go. You know, so put this journal box right here. This one is directional, so pay attention to the direction that the little ornament hangers are going. So this is kind of the original layout that I was thinking I would do. 
But then when I got looking at my pictures, it didn't work that way. So you may want to, at this point, decide what pictures you're going to put on here or think about how you take pictures. So the layout that I showed you, even though this is from before cell phones, um, mo most of the pictures are um, vertical. And so they actually were um, four by four pictures my grandmother had taken, if I have my, I don't have the others right here, but uh, there are four by four pictures that she had taken with her little 110 millimeter camera. And so when I had them printed, I cropped them in just to, to fit. This one was horizontal, so I trimmed it. Um, but you can see that I kind of mixed it around with where I put the mats and put this here. But let's do the, let's do the next one a little bit differently so that you can just see, or maybe we'll just play around with some with some options. Um, so what I wanted to do was to make sure that if I put the red one here, that the other red one wasn't right next to it. Okay. So you want to have some balance. So where's the one that was blue and gold? So this one, so maybe you don't want the, maybe you like the gold better than the blue, in which case you could do something like this. Although I don't know that I love that very much. Maybe I would do it like that. Um, you can also, this is going to fit right on here. So you could do something like that. If you wanted to do this way, you could put your photo mat right here. You know, what I did was basically not use the journal box and I journaled just on some paper and I did this and I did mine this way. So I like, I think I like the horizontal title, especially if you have a lot of vertical pictures. I think it's nice to have some variety. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and stick our little title down. So I don't know, like those of you that are following along, a couple of you have sent me your layouts to see, and I have loved that. I've loved seeing people like finishing layouts using these ideas. Um, and some of them are almost exactly the same as the ones I'm doing, and some of them are very, very different. So I am liking it a lot, so thank you. And I think I'm gonna do this. Um, so you could, I, I like to line up my mats somehow. Um, I line them up here at the bottom, but I want to put the train laser die cut in here. Um, depending on what you're gonna be doing, but for me, this was a you know, Christmas morning pictures. And I'll show you the layout again, but. I got this little ride-on car thing that I remember. I'm the oldest, and I remember my younger siblings riding on that thing forever. So we're going to put the train here. We're going to cut it so that it just stays on the green. And then we're going to use these two ribbons over on this side. And I think that's plenty of... Um, embellishments. If you were doing this this way, you might want to put the ribbon here. Uh, you could do your mats like this, like that, and put this up here, and maybe then you want both of your um, ribbons on that side if you were doing the vertical. But we're going to do the horizontal, and that was the blue one I had to decide about, isn't it? I think I got to stick with the gold. And for this one, because the train is going to go over this, I want to put this mat, I'm going to do this guy first. And I'm going to put it up as close, not as not super close to the top. I'm centering it. And the little chevron lines make it really easy to make sure my mat is straight. But I'm going to put this up. It's less than a quarter of an inch, I think, from the top. Or like three eighths of an inch. So, but you see how it's got the lines on the um, the chevron makes it easy for me to line those up. And then I'm gonna make sure that this aligns with the um, the bottom of this. And sometimes what I do is I'll take a photo or another piece of cardstock and bump it, butt it up against here, so I know that's straight. And then I can use that to make sure that this guy is straight. All right, so now I know that these are exactly lined up and I'll put my photo mat down here. And so now because I wanna put the train, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is align these two bottom pieces. 
No, we're going to keep that. We're not, not going to do the blue. I know that now that a lot of us are buying the bundles, we end up with the mats. And I've heard so many people tell me that they just struggle with how to use the mats. And the easiest one is the one that we don't think of, and that is to use them as photo mats. And I love that you always get at least two that will be the same because you have the frame one, not always, but you have the frame one and the solid. So just remember that to look at them and find the ones that you feel like go together. I could do that. Hmm, that's upside down. You know, I kind of like that too, with a little space for journaling. I like the symmetry of that. And of course, I didn't. I didn't use this one on my other layout because I. I ended up writing journaling in a different spot. Hmm. Or we could have done this one this way and turned this one vertically and put them both down here together. But I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to mix this up and give this a vertical photo up here. I think I may grab the other mat. Except I don't know where I put them. Have I told you my quote before that scrapbooking is is saying, I just had that, where did it go? Over and over. That's exactly how I feel about that. Okay, what do we think? The red is a little bit different. I guess it's the light red. Is that too much with the ornaments? Oh well, if you don't want that, you could then use this as a photo mat. You just, this is a four by six and you would just have to trim your, um, trim your photo down a little bit. But so fast to do it like this. Now here, this is a five inch piece and I'm not gonna use my, um, I'm not gonna use my trimmer because what I want to do is just to make sure that the cut looks like it's in a, a logical spot. I don't want to cut like here. I don't want to cut through a train car. So I'm going to cut between these two little train cars, which is about the five inches. So the, the these are double-sided laser mats and I you can use the other side, but then the train's going to go that way and I kind of wanted it to go that way. Plus I liked the colors better. So, but you could decide, you could use, you know, if you were doing this, not with this paper, but maybe you're using that Argyle paper with the blue and the blue and the green Argyle. And I'm, I'm trying you guys to limit myself to the papers we haven't used yet. I know that I have used multiple paper packs in this series and uh, the ornaments paper of all things is one that I have used from three packs of paper. So uh, my apologies if you have had to, you know, nobody had to buy any extra paper packs, I hope, but, um, you know, always use something else. That's totally fine. All right. So there's the train and then we're going to put the, oh, I stuck that down already. I think we'll put the, this also had the blue. If you wanted to tie the blue in right here, I used the green on my sample but i think i wanted to swap it out because i do ha i didn't use any of the blue or I, the blue is clear over here um i think i do want to swap it out and i think i'm going to use the blue right here and then put the red on the outside and i felt like the um the i the little loop-de-loops i didn't want them to be too close to each other should I do it on top of or underneath? I kind of think I need to go underneath the journal box. For this one, I want to use my repositionable adhesive. And I'm just, I'm doing it on top of my paper just because it's thick enough. I should have pulled out my little silicone mat, but you guys know I'm lazy. If my friend Donna Guest hadn't already taken the name The Lazy Scrapbooker, I think I could, um, I think I could have a, a great case for being able to identify myself the same way. Yeah, the green's a little different. I'm going to, I'm going to do it um, on the, on, so the, ah, wrong tape. So the blue side shows up. 
All right. You'd think that knowing that one of them is green and one of them is blue would help me remember which, which adhesive I'm grabbing, but apparently I can't talk and scrapbook at the same time. this here and I am going to tuck it under. But you would decide, and of course, if you're, um, if you're using the vertical version of this, it wouldn't matter because this would just not show. All right, so here we go with the lasers and the train, and then I felt like it needed something else. And so from the embellishments, and I don't know why I felt like it needed something else. This is super busy paper. Um, with all this confetti and once you get your pictures on but it just I felt like there was kind of a an empty space and now on this one is kind of an empty space here too but we've got these other embellishments you've got the stickers I liked the um I like the holly and there isn't a holly uh, embellishment and I don't think there's a sticker for the holly we've got the these kind of berries but I think that would be too much. I don't know. I liked these kind of simple leaves. And then these, which are a little bit different leaf, but they have some of that blue in it. Let's put it over the top of that like that. And then we've got these two little bows, a red bow and a green bow. The back are blue and white. So you could always use this for birthday too. But I want to use the green and the red, just like that as a little little embellishment cluster and I, I may end up putting something else down here but I think maybe a picture or something else would would go well in here I don't know about embellishments I'm gonna just do this one um, just like this with the leaves like my sample and I'm putting this on with repositionable so that in case I decide to use this for something else um, and I need to turn that that picture I can pick it up now it will, the repositionable will lift up the color from the uh, paper. So you can move this, but it does, it does make itself known. So just be aware that if you want, if you want to reposition this, of course you can, but even if you do it fairly soon, um, it's, it's a good chance that you're going to you know, pick up, it's going to pick up some of the paper and I can show you what that, what I mean by that in a second. Okay. Now that I've got that there, I think I'm going to move this down here. So this is the green and then I'll put the red like that, the two bows. All right. So there's our layout. That was pretty fast. That's one of the nice things about using these mats is they're already cut. And so you don't have to do very much at all. And then of course you would put your pictures on. So here's mine again. Merry Christmas to you. This is Christmas 1971. And I think it turned out very cute. And I hope that you will have fun doing it. Uh, if you did want to do a different kind of journal box, because the way I configured my pictures, this one wasn't going to fit. And so I just cut it from this, actually this same paper. Um, the little icons has this gray with the grid on it. So that made it really nice for journaling. All right, so here you go. Let's see, we're gonna call this quick mat layout, I guess. Yeah, quick mat layout. And hopefully it will also be quick for you, even if I made you do welding. Uh, if you don't wanna do the welding, of course you could stick these onto a, a background page or your album page, and then you wouldn't have to deal with the welding, but it, it's just really easy to just weld them together and have those, have those pieces become a background page. So this is layout number nine. Is this, I can't remember if it's eight or nine. I've lost count. I have it written down somewhere, um, but I'll have at least one more this week. I am heading out of town kind of unexpectedly, uh, not for anything bad, for a scrapbook thing. Um, and then next week, Monday is the last day of July and I will be back with my very last video. And I will do a flip through of all the layouts that we've completed in this series so that you can see them all with the pictures on them and hopefully with the journaling and hopefully that will inspire you to do get more of your Christmas photos done or whatever photos you choose. I love to see when people do these layouts with with some other collection. 
So thanks so much for following along with this Christmas in July. Love, love when you make comments. Of course, the likes and subscribes really help me help YouTube to know that you want to see more of my videos and help YouTube to know that maybe your friends might want to see some of my videos, which also helps me. So thanks very much. I'll be back probably Friday uh, with another series. I think I have an album flip through. I'm going to squeeze in the middle in there um, that is not Christmas related, but I'll be back on Friday with layout. I think layout 10, layout 10. It's, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll figure out what it is once I, once I go back and look at my notes. So here you go. Uh, easy matte layout. I think, um, joy to the world by creative memories. Thanks so much. Happy scrapbooking.